I've always been a champion for the underdog. I mean, how else can you explain my dedication to children with obesity who are a subset of kids that really no one wanted to deal with or, or even think about up until recently. And within that group of children with obesity, there's an even smaller group that has a special place in my heart. And those are the children with special health care needs. Children on the autism spectrum disorder. And by the way, it's Autism Awareness Month this month. So particularly important for us to talk about this today. And these kids with special health care needs used to be sort of excluded from being able to get bariatric surgery with me or even getting some of the medications uh, that are out there to treat obesity. That was really because there were these rules, these artificial hurdles that the insurance companies used to make where you had to quote unquote, understand the post-operative diet or be able to really engage with the post-operative treatment plan or the obesity medicine treatment plan. And that really wasn't fair because these kids need some help. So I've been on a one-man crusade to try to change uh, public opinion about childhood obesity, as you know, but also about children with special health care needs and autism spectrum disorder children. And that's why I'm talking about this today. So the good news is that the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics has in their guidelines a brief statement saying that children with autism spectrum disorder and other special health care needs uh, don't need to be treated any differently than other children when it comes to uh, obesity treatment. The data supporting that have been pretty scarce. So I started looking at this special group of kids uh, in my surgical practice. And back in 2019, I actually published the first series of uh, adolescents with special health care needs who had undergone bariatric surgery. More recently in 2023, uh, I presented these data nationally and uh, ended up publishing those data in 2024. And it turns out these kids do just as well as the rest of my kids. There's nothing different about their outcomes. With adults, the data are a little bit more variable in large part because the wraparound services that a lot of adult programs provide can, uh, can differ. But um, all in all, these kids did, did really well. And now I'm sort of a national expert on this and have been asked to give talks uh, all over the world on this particular topic, uh, including one next month in Montreal, Canada, if anybody's there. So you never know what you're gonna find when you keep an open mind and explore science. So when I first started doing surgery on these patients, my hypothesis was they would do just as well as the other kids. Like, why should they be any different? But as it turns out, certain children with autism spectrum disorder, especially the males, actually had better outcomes. So you never know, and it's worth trying. And it's better to make an error trying something new than to not try at all, in my opinion. So the overall take home message here, and obviously I just spoke specifically about children with special health care needs and autism spectrum disorder, but the overall message is that everybody with obesity deserves comprehensive and compassionate care. And even if there might be something in there that gives you some pause or something different about the particular individual, it's probably worth a try because you're never gonna know how it works unless you give it a try. And that's why I think obesity treatment is important uh, in general. And honestly, the only way we're gonna ever get a handle on this disease that's truly crippling America. So again, if you like what you're hearing, send me some feedback, likes, dislikes, subscribe to the channel. And I hope you listen to more of what I've got to say because we have a whole bunch more topics to touch on this season. See you soon.